All right, so we talked about open and closed paths using the pin tool in Illustrator. Here I have it uh, with a low opacity. If I turn it up to 100% opacity, remember the other way I can do that is I can just make it an empty path at any time. And honestly, what I often do, there's various ways to see how your sketch is stacking up, is I'll keep this as my usual default black shape fill, empty stroke. But if I just swap that, I can see the uh, the fill and the stroke separate from each other, right? And sometimes I'll take my stroke down to a smaller size, and you'll find that under properties. So if I wanna make my stroke less than one point in my instance, that's the default, I can take it down to like 0.25. Or I can even take it down to zero so that the stroke is always empty, but I can always click on it and see it and modify my points. This is what's called outline view without having to go into specialized outline view, which is command Y. The problem with specialized outline view is that will only show you your vector outlines and so you'll lose your sketch and command Y toggles in and out of it. So here's the dilemma of vectors. Because they're so exact, sometimes there's something in your sketch that doesn't quite come across in the vector. And in this case, it is these, which look like straights, but I think they're just slightly curved. And that gives a little bit of energy to that crown that I like and I don't want to lose. There's also a slight curve there. So in the same way that I made this curve using the convert anchor point tool, this one, which is under the pin tool, and then using my direct selection tool to play with the handles, I can set that curve exactly. It's honestly best practice to have only one curve handle per curve. The only time that's not true is if you have an S curve and it's changing direction. But if it's all in one direction, so either concave or convex like this, instead of building it with two handles, just have one handle that controls it. It's going to be smoother and more even because of that. And if I need to change where the anchor goes, I just use that direct selection tool and move that anchor a little bit. So if I want a curve here, I don't need to work on the other curve on this side. I can just work from this point. So I use the convert anchor point tool and I pull it out on both sides very quickly to pull it in on this side so it stays straight. And then I have this handle to play with. And if I want it kind of lower, a lower curve, I just pull the handle out. The shallower the curve, the deeper it is, the further away from the anchor, the longer that handle will be. Sometimes these curves are incredibly subtle, but they're always there. But if they get beyond the anchor, then you start getting strange bumps, right? So you always want to know what's creating, what handles are creating your curves. Then for this one, I'm going to play with the curve right here. So I use the convert anchor point tool. And there are shortcuts to all of these. But when you're starting out, it's good to just make yourself realize what tools you're using. Because I think the great downfall of Illustrator is none of it's intuitive. And they could make it more intuitive at this point, but people have been using Illustrator professionally for so long, they are not very welcome to change. The freeware version of Illustrator that I'm going to be using to teach the afternoon is vector.com, V-E-C-T-R.com. It has all of the same functionality in a little bit of a user, more user-friendly way, where you just double-click and it will turn the tool, things like that, show you your anchors. It doesn't have a separate full selection and direct selection, but it's the principles that you need to understand. And as long as we can get to a vector, we're good. So I think those are the curves I needed. So now I'm going to take that path, which is an empty path, right? I'm going to make it solid black deep in this lower right-hand corner. I don't know why that happened.
and I'll click off of it. Until I click off of it, I'm always going to see those the, that anchor line around it in a different color. And this might show me, I like it, that curve's maybe a little too strong, and maybe that anchor point needs to move a little bit. And so now just with the, the direct selection tool, the white arrow, I can just drag that point down a little bit, see how that looks. Now that feels more proportioned. And at any time I can use the large selection tool, I call it the large selection tool, the black arrow, and just delete things I don't need. Here's another trick. Once you've used the pen tool and you've really refined a shape with as few anchor points as possible, then it's really helpful to maybe use that element again. So if we look at our layers, you'll see that that's its own path within that layer. If I copy it, Command C, and then paste it, Command V, it will give me another copy of it, which is a new path. And then with the large selection tool, the, the black arrow, I can use this as a start for my wing if I wanted to. And in professional logo design, this is done all the time because it actually gives a balance to the design. Does that make sense? So I just used the large selection tool to select the thing I did. And I took time to really get the curves where I wanted them. The anchors, I don't have any extra anchor points here. That's the advantage of the pen tool. Once you've done that, it's like creating a custom shape within Photoshop. I can just Command C to copy it, Command V to paste it, and now have this element, which with the large selection tool, I can just use the transform functions to make rotate into anything I want. If I wanted it to be exactly the same, I would hold down Shift when I enlarged it. And in Illustrator, this is the opposite of Photoshop. When you hold down shift, it locks the proportions. If you don't hold down shift, it lets it be warped. Whereas in Photoshop, if you hold down shift, it lets it be warped when you're transforming. Otherwise, it's already locked proportions. Now, what do you guys think? Do you think I should have the, the barbed wings or the softer wings of my sketch? Fair enough. So if I want to save that as an option for later, instead of deleting those paths, because those paths take almost no memory, I can just turn them off with the eyeballs. Right. So those paths are still there whenever I want them, but for now I can just turn them off. Now to draw this, I'm going to show you what it's like to use the pen tool when you're not using straights. I'm going to start here, and immediately there's a curve. The trick is to go as far as you can before you, you plot your next anchor point, not to do like lots of little connect the dots along the way. So if I know there's a curve, I click here, and then I drag, and that will drag out these curved handles. The problem is, and this is the great frustration of Illustrator, and why some people like to do everything with straights first like I showed you with the crown, is as soon as you let go, it defaults to another curve. And you can't get it not to do that, not with the pen tool. And you want to stay on the pen tool so that you can complete a path, right? So now when I click and I don't drag, then it goes back to a straight. But then if I drag out a curve again, the next one's going to be a curve. And in this case, that's not too bad, even though I don't have control of it. That's because I'd never have control of the, of the handle that I just left behind until I'm done with the path. Because I have to use the white arrow for that, the direct selection tool to control that handle. So curves into curves, straights into straights. So if you find this really, really frustrating, which I often do, like in that instance, notice what's happening is the curve goes into a curve. I want it to be straight, but I can't control that yet. I want this to also be curved. It's really frustrating. But I'll be able to fix it all once I've plotted the, 
the points. Now one trick is what I just did. So I'm going to go back. So you see it's going curve into curve. While you're still on the pen tool, if you click on the anchor point, it will then take the curve off of that side. So you get what's called a one-sided handle. And now I can go all the way over here and make that one curve. So you'll get, a, you'll get used to this. I want to do that again. I want a one-sided handle. And then for this, it actually looks like a straight. Straight into a straight. And now I'm going to go all the way down to the tip of the tail and try to make this one curve. And then I'm going to click on it. Then I'm going to go all the way here and make it a curve. So if you don't want to have to do it after the fact, like this curve is going the wrong way, so I'm going to click here, get rid of the curve on that side, and instead you just want one curve per side. That's why you want one handle per curve. Click there. It just has to depend on curves going into curves or not. But once you get some practice at it, it's not too tricky. Also, this happens. Remember how Illustrator wants to fill it as we go? So it's always connecting from my very first point to my very last point. Sometimes that will cut through. It will make it look like everything's twisted. It's all fine. It's just waiting until I get to my next point. So you just have to trust the process here. This is an example where you might want two curves because you have that S curve between the two. But most of the time you want to just do this. Now I can leave this as an empty path by clicking on a different tool. And I can pick it up later with the pen tool. So for instance, I might swap it to select it and then swap it. so I can see my sketch. And sometimes you can do things you like better with all these curves than you can with your sketch. So now with the knowledge I have, because practice always helps, let me try it again. Right? But if I didn't, I just hit Command Z, but you can always undo it as well. If I wanted to continue with this, I just start with that point. I click on that last point, and then I pick it up with the pen tool. And I would recommend almost always doing it this way. Plotting your curves, clicking on the anchor, plotting your next curve or straight. And the only time you don't need to click back on that anchor to get what you want is when you're going straights into straights. Now that's a closed path. Now there are other things that the pen tool does. If I hover over the path, I'll get a little plus sign with the pen tool and that will add an anchor point and it will automatically put the handle curves on it that are needed for that anchor point. In the same way, if I automatically hover over an anchor point with the pen tool, it will give me the minus, and then it will delete that anchor point. The problem is, it was now depending on the curves of that extra anchor point to make that curve. So I have to hit Command-Z twice to get back to where it made the curve without that extra anchor point. Because again, you use the pen tool when you want as few anchor points as possible. Now, how can I convert these curves into straights? After the fact, I can go to that Convert Anchor Point tool, like I did for the crown. And I can click on it, and it'll turn it into a straight. Or I can click on it, drag it out, and if I hold down shift, it will even out the curve, usually on a 45 degree angle. But if that's not what I'm looking for, I'm looking for that, then I use my direct selection tool to grab the handle on just one side. And then I can set those curves differently. And sometimes you just need to do that. So in this case, I need to adjust these handles separately. Because when you just plot them with the pin tool, they're going to be equal on both sides.